Hi, cultural geographers. This is Mrs. T, and this is our last uh, short lecture where I'm going to be showing you the demographic transition model that we've looked at a few times before. We've talked about stage one, stage two, three, and four so far, and now we're going to talk a little bit about stage five. I've mentioned it a few times already in the other videos, but um, stage five is a tricky or I guess I'll just say it's a th theoretical stage of the demographic transition model. Um, there are debates that, that go on uh, among demographers about whether there are any countries actually in stage five of the demographic transition model. Essentially, stage four is, um, you know, you have a lot of good evidence that there are countries in the world that are in stage four. You see the total population kind of leveling off and you see this um, fluctuation from one generation to the next of birth rate and death rate kind of evening themselves out over time. So you don't see a whole lot of um, growth in the population. And you can see toward the end of stage four here, this line has a tendency to go toward stable. And then this dotted portion of the line in this stage five section that you see does not have a corresponding population pyramid in this particular particular uh, depiction of demographic transition. Um, this stage five, you see the death rate start to go up. You see this fear, it's dotted because this depiction of um, demographic transition has stage five as a theoretical stage. You will find if you do a Google search, and that's one of the things I want you to do, I want you to do a Google search and find other depictions of the demographic transition model where you will see sometimes um, specific country examples or specific um, societal examples of population pyramids down here, but you will see um, some, some theorists who say, Yes, there are countries such as Japan, such as South Korea, such as some countries in um, Asia. For instance, uh, China is not in stage five of demographic transition. Nobody would ever argue that it is. However, in the last 30 years, you can look up population control mechanisms that the government has put in place, such as the one child policy. And if you look at the population pyramid for a country like China, where males are on one side and females are on the other side, because of that one child policy and because of the gender role changes, um, or not changes, but the gender role, uh, you call it a gender dichotomy, it's a two different standards for social value for males compared to females. And so in China, for centuries and centuries, Male children had the responsibility of taking care of the elderly, taking care of the elderly parent, and that was just a given, that was part of the norms of society. And so when China instituted um, a one-child policy way back in the late 80s and 90s, I think it was, um, of the last century, most people, because males were the favored sex for your offspring, most people tried for a male, and if um, a female was in development in the womb, sex selection abortions would take place, or many, many, many female babies were abandoned at birth um, so that they wouldn't have to be registered as the only child of that family um, with the government uh, because they wanted to try for a boy the next time. So there have been a lot of countries, uh, including China, that have tried certain kinds of population controls, but China's was pretty drastic because they looked, they wanted to modernize and um, have a better economic condition in their society, and population control, to a large extent, is something that can begin to put a country from de underdeveloped to developing to developed. If you look at the comparison of population between underdeveloped, developing, and developed countries, you will see large birth rates, large um, youth populations in developing or underdeveloped countries, and more poverty rates also 
compared to lower birth rates or even just a replacement birth rate, which typically is considered to be 2.1 children per female in society. The 0.1, I think we've said before when we were talking about this, is an average, so not every female has children. Not every female has two children. Some, female have, some females have six, some females have one, some females have zero. Um, so this uh, all averages out into the point something children. And so replacement rate for your society so that population doesn't grow, but it doesn't shrink either, is usually considered to be around 2.1 children per female in society. So those birth rates, those death rates, those um, development levels, whether industrialization has taken place, whether um, urbanization has taken place, is there a proper infrastructure in place so that man-made diseases or natural killers like amoeba in your water supply can be taken care of so that people are not dying prematurely from preventable causes. So all of these things, all of these issues are linked. And so in project two that you're gonna be getting this week, I'm gonna be asking you to do a country comparison. And even though you don't have the instructions for that assignment yet, um, you, let me just give you a heads up. We can look at stage three, four, and five. And I want you to do a country comparison. You are for sure going to find examples of countries that are in stage three. You're for sure going to find an example of countries that are in stage four. USA, the USA is usually described as a country that's in stage four, but your instructions are going to tell you, do not use the USA as one of your country profiles. So use any other country but the USA as one of your country profiles and make a comparison between a stage three country, a stage four country, and then research whether stage five exists or not. You develop your understanding of what stage five is and develop your um, theory. Is stage five possible? Is it only theoretical? Are some countries already in stage five? You tell me which way you lean and if you think there's a country in stage five, use one of them and as an example, you know, give me an example of a stage five country and make a comparison of what you know the characteristics for stage five are compared to what's happening in that country right now without immigration taken into consideration. Because the rest of this week, in our future videos, we're going to be talking about immigration and um, how that can alter a country's population. Uh, we're going to be looking at push and pull factors, economy, infrastructure, the agrarian versus the industrialized lifestyle. So we will still be pulling from chapters 11 and 12. Um, social conditions, war, politics, all of these things have um, particular uh, chapters associated with them that we're going to get to after midterm. There might be social conditions such as religious restrictions that do not give you freedom and so maybe that's a push factor to get you out of a country. But this demographic transition stuff that we've been talking about so far, remember there's some criticism for it because it is theoretical and it doesn't consider this total population down here that you see in this chart that you see go up, up, up and maybe stabilize and maybe drop off as society contracts in stage five. If stage five is happening, um, it doesn't consider immigration, right? Because some countries will continue to be political entities themselves, but the cultural identity of the people within it maybe is going to change. So for instance, an example from the 1990s, um, I had a lot of exchange students from Austria come and live with me at various times. Austria is a tiny country in Europe, if you know your world history, it's played a major role in each of the world wars so far. But Austria um, was having kind of a cultural identity crisis because the native-born citizens of Austria had stopped having babies. Their population replacement rate was well below the 2.1 ch uh, children per woman. It was something like 0.6 children on average per woman, and therefore, you do the math the native population of Austria was going to decline and become virtually extinct and an immigrant population was going to take its place. 
Now, um, in a country like the United States, where diversity is so prized, we might not think such, so what? You know, all of us are immigrants, right? And we become um, Estadounidenses or United Statesians, we become that over time. But um, in Austria, they didn't like the fact that they would possibly lose their cultural identity, possibly lose their national heritage. And so the government started, um, well, didn't start, they changed some of the paternity and maternity rules and benefits that people had to encourage young people to start having babies. Um, if I remember correctly, they... Um, allowed first-time mothers to have a year off of work with pay and first-time fathers to have six months off work with pay. And I believe there was a stipend, uh, you know, a payment bonus, kind of like um, we all got in our stimulus checks um, earlier this year during co the height of COVID. Um, they got a stimulus check, so to speak, if um, they had a baby. Uh, so there were several different uh, things that the Austrian government did to try to encourage people to have babies, whereas in China they were discouraging people from having more than one child and even were enforcing it with legal means um, if you tried to have more than one child to kind of control the population. So both very different motivations, but government actions nonetheless having to do with population control or population boost, whichever one is seen as most advantageous for your cultural identity, for your economy, etc. So these birth and death rates are interesting political um, topics, in addition to uh, simply cultural topics having to do with population size or um, social identity of the people who live there. So be watching for an announcement when Project 2 is ready and do some research right now about different kinds of countries. Um, not the USA, but different kind of countries um, that might be in stage three, four, and five, and get uh, get an idea of what you might want to um, cover when you see those instructions for uh, project one that's coming really soon. Okay, text me with questions.